that there are different fatigue design rules for welds and pressure vessel and piping codes. The main difference is in the fatigue strength reduction factor and the stress intensification factor that the codes used. Fatigue design rule for welds in the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code are based on fatigue strength reduction factors instead of stress intensification factors. The code specific fatigue design curve generated from smooth based metal specimens is used without the presence of the welds in this case. For the ASME B31 piping code, it uses the stress intensification factors. And these are based on the component SN of fatigue curves with a reference fatigue strength based on straight pipe girth welds conducted by Markle in the 1950s. Extensive fatigue testing that determined the fatigue strength reduction factors and the stress intensification factors to take into account the stress concentration effects are associated with various types of component geometry, weld configuration, loading conditions, but also environmental effects. This slide introduces the two main fatigue calculation methods in the ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code, Section 8, Division 2. The first is the smooth bar method, which is based on the notch stress. This is relevant for all coded releases before 2007. This includes the determination of the peak stresses and comparing it to the SN curve. The peak stresses can be calculated using FEA or approximated using fatigue strength reduction factors. The second method is the welded joint method, and this is based on the structural stress. It was introduced in the ASME Section 8 Division 2 code releases after 2007. And this involves the determination of the structural stresses, which are the linear far field stresses required to obtain general equilibrium in the model. And the structural stresses are used to estimate the relevant peak stresses. The effects of the welds on the fatigue strength is accounted for in the master SN curve. So the next slide shows the background of these uh, SN curves. These are relevant for both the EN and the ASME codes. So the SN curves are based on Markle's fatigue experiments on the strafed pipes with the girth weld, which is also known as a butt weld. The design SN curve is based on smooth bar experiments for welded and unwelded parts. The design margins are based on probabilistic and deterministic approaches, depending on the type of part. Basically, the experimental values were fitted using curves, and on top of those curves, the safety margins were applied in order to obtain the design SN curve, used in our assessment. The safety margins included 20 on cycles and 2 on stresses for the ASME code, and 10 on cycles and 1.5 on stresses for the EN code. It's important to note that it's not a real safety factor, and it is only meant to include the effects that were not measured by the experiments of Markle. So some of these effects are data scatter, which includes a subfactor of 2, the effect of the size, which includes a safety factor of 2.5, and any environmental or roughness effects, which includes a safety factor of around 4. When multiplied together, this forms the safety factor of 20 on cycles that we see in the ASME code. Now the smooth bar method utilizes the notch peak stresses. The smooth bar method is based on the prediction of the notch peak stress, which is the membrane, bending, and the peak stress components. The smooth bar method is easy to implement using the finite element analysis techniques, as it can be used for welded and unwelded components. And the smooth bar method is allowed in ASME Section 8 Division 2 code releases before and after 2007. The fatigue strength reduction factor is required to calculate the notch stresses based on the structural stress. Fatigue strength reduction factor is a stress intensification factor which accounts for the effect of a local structural discontinuity, also known as a stress concentration, on the fatigue strength. Weld fatigue strength reduction factors combine stress concentration and other weld related effects on the reduced fatigue strength. The table on the left shows typical values for the ASME Section 8 Division 2 code, where the fatigue strength reduction va uh, factor varies between 1 for a full penetration weld and 4 for a fillet weld. In the EN code, it specifies different classes which relate to the reduced fatigue strength of a weld, though in the figure we see it ranging between a class 40 to class 80 for a similar type of weld. And these fatigue strength reduction factors depend on weld inspection levels. So the different inspection methods are volumetric, surface, and visual inspection. And within volumetric, the most common methods are radiographic testing and ultrasonic testing. And for surface inspection, the magnetic particle testing and penetrant testing is used. A high quality inspection level 
means that the uncertainty related to the fatigue strength reduction factor decreases. A high quality level of inspection reduces the fatigue strength uh, reduction factor considerably. So this slide shows the notch peak stress compared with the SN curves. A couple of slides ago, we saw how the SN design curves are constructed, and now we can compare the notch peak stress to the applicable SN curve for the specific material. Basically, the vertical axis of this SN curve is the stress amplitude, and the x-axis is the allowable cycles before high cycle fatigue will occur. The design margin of the curve is 2 with relation to the stresses and 20 with relation to the cycles, as we saw before. But again, this is no safety margin, but covers effects that can influence fatigue life that were not initially investigated in the test that provided the data for the SN curves. When the secondary stress exceeds SPS, the additional plasticity is corrected by a fatigue penalty factor KE. The previous slide presented the smooth bar method, so it is also possible to use the structural stress method to evaluate um, fatigue analysis. The structural stress method ignores the peak stresses, and this method is allowed by the ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Section 8 Division 2 after 2007, so using the welded joint fatigue curves. The structural stress method relies on the prediction of structural stress range. The structural stress is defined as the membrane and bending stress required to satisfy the general equilibrium of the structures, and the calculation of the peak stress using FEA is not required. The peak component of the total stress should be excluded to use the master SN curve. And this method is generally insensitive for FEA accuracy, as no resolving of peak stresses is required. This means that master SN curves are determined for welded geometries, including the notch effect, and no fatigue strength reduction factor is required. The structural stress method is generally preferred above the classical smooth bar approach. But it is important to note that the structural stress method may only be used if approved by the purchaser or the owner, because the welded geometries need to be similar to the ones that form the basis of the master SN curves.